Uh, what's old is new again. Retro is officially back in style, but it's not just what mm. is being bought, but how, oh. Christopher Cimino, how it's being purchased that's undergoing the biggest overhaul. Serious, you mm -hmm. use my last name. Oh, so serious. joining us this morning with more on why consumers are hungry for the products of the past is consumer trend expert, Kate Hardcastle. Welcome, Kate, to New York Living. How are you this morning? I'm wonderful, thank you so much. It's obviously afternoon here in the UK, but good to be joining you. Well, thank this. you in the UK. Look at her. How is the rest of the Tuesday looking for us? Because we'll get to the <laughs> No. We want to go retro, not forward. <laughs> We're going back. Seriously, though, but why is retro making such a big comeback, do you think? Well, there's nothing more fascinating for me than the study of consumers. And I think what's really brilliant is we've always shopped emotionally. And that means that we will find in products and in services things that are really important to us. One of those is the feeling of nostalgia. And with that, in these very challenging times of late, we get a sense of comfort. And that means incredibly that we are buying back etch sketches We're buying those lava lamps to revisit the cycle of life. And we we do get these cycles in music and certainly in films and TV. They're about 30 years normally. I remember certainly wanting to be a Beatles fan and, and hugely <laughs> delving into my music when I was young because I wanted to be the cool kid. And now you see kids walking around in Guns N' Roses t-shirts. I mean, I do feel like saying, have you listened to enough albums to have right, that t-shirt on? Right. But we've got this brilliant research from a Marxist that shows us that actually to be a great marketer, to be a great business, you need to feed into these trends. A lot of these items as well are very tactile. And I think in a world where everything seems to be touchscreen, that matters a lot Right, too. to be able to touch a toy. My sister was just moved, and in her move, we discovered the jacks. Oh, gosh, We that's hadn't really played jacks nice. in so long. We stopped what we were doing to play jacks. <laughs> but what are, Kate, what are some of the hot items that people are gravitating towards now? Well, and don't forget as well, with uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, these are great ways to make money if you want to clear your attic. So hot in demand, VHS tapes, Etch-a-Sketch, um, lava lamps, and certainly mood rings, if you've maybe got any of those mm -hmm. to find really selling very well through the resale sites. I think what's also fascinating as well is the fact that we've seen a lot of toys come back. Indeed, you know, in 96, Buzz Lightyear was one of the hottest items. There was a bit of a black market going on for that figurine. And it looks like he might be a top seller again this year. Yeah. So we really are seeing people wanting sustainability and longevity in what they're buying. And I think a lot of that tips into the environmental messages. So what are the main differences you're finding from shopping in the past to shopping now? There is a obviously think, a different experience. Yeah. No, I love shopping in America. There is no better feeling, but I think we're hopefully going to get some of that real life human service back as we swap over maybe a quantity of stores with a quality of stores. And we can have that at every part of the food chain. We can have that when we need value, but we can have that in luxury and premium. I don't ever think the high street and the malls and town centers were dead. I think they're just going through an evolution. Yeah. And we've just seen a rapid increase of that as we've gone through the last two years, obviously particularly blighted by the pandemic. So hold hope if you love shopping in real life like uh -huh. nearly 50% of Americans do I think we're gonna see a resurgence and it's gonna be all the better for it Kate if you could bring <laughs> a retro item back from the past what would it be I was a huge fan this is gonna be so controversial uh -oh. of the cabbage patch I knew it. I knew she was gonna say cabbage <laughs> patch kid. what was yours name did you have one and what was what was his or hers name I was never allowed one. My mum and dad say they were grotesque and a waste of plastic. So if anyone's got one they'd like to sell to me, I would be very You know what, Kate? Kate's Listen, in the market. We'll find somebody. We're going to find one for you. We'll get your address and we'll send one to you. Just let us be the godparents. Yes. I'm coming over to New York soon. Keep them there for me. I'll come grab them all and bring an extra suitcase. We're going to we'll do it. You, Kate. Thank you so much, Kate.